Hello everyone and welcome back to the first and last Gamer Podcast, the only podcast where Julian Gerstorf talks about Into the Wild and refers to himself in the third person. I'm here all by myself with special guest Julian Gerstorf. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's really great being here. Today we'll be discussing a few questions about Into the Wild, so prepare your rice and poison potatoes, because this ought to be a doozy. Chris McCandless went into the wild in search of a raw, transcendent experience. Did he find it? <laughs> well, Julian, if you define the raw, transcendent experience as eating a bunch of poisonous potato seeds, then sure. But otherwise, I do not believe he found the enlightenment he wanted. I mean, at the very end, he wrote that happiness is only real when shared on page 129. And maybe that's raw, and maybe that's transcendent, but I think it's a different kind of raw and transcendent he was going for, you know? One where he doesn't starve to death like a dumb idiot loser. He also said, oh, how one wishes sometimes to escape the meaningless dullness of human eloquence. From all those sublime phrases to take refuge in nature, apparently so inarticulate, or in the wordlessness of long, grinding labor, of sound sleep, of true music, or of a human understanding rendered speechless by emotion. On page 129, it sounds to me like he realized it was a dumb pipe dream fantasy that a lot of kids had, and he just had the insane lack of brain function to pursue such a daunting task. Oh, okay, Julian. Um, w well, moving on to our next question. Have you ever had such an experience? Could college or moving out be a similar type of experience? Well, I've never had an experience like that, because I've never even been to Alaska. In fact, I'm not even sure what Alaska is, but it sounds horrible. College or moving out may be similar. In both situations, you end up living off of rice and have zero dollars. Alex lives off of rice throughout the book, like when he lived on the coast for 30 days alone. He subsisted on nothing but five pounds of rice. Or, from Bohr's account on page 45, stating, he could live for a month on nothing but 25 pounds of rice. Personally, I haven't had to live on my own, but I can see the comparison. However, Chris ran away from everything. He even changed his own gosh darn freaking name. Which brings me to my next question. To symbolize the complete severance from his previous life, he even adopted a new name. No longer would he answer to Chris McCandless. He was now Alexander Supertramp, master of his own destiny and lightsabers. Why did Chris change his name? What does it mean to assume a new identity? Well... Chris changed his name to live out his fantasy of being completely detached from his family in a fistfight with his own mental Muhammad Ali. We learn about his hatred for his parents when he says, So irrational, so oppressive, disrespectful, and, and insulting that I finally pass my breaking point. On page 46, and when he shouts in a rant about them to his sister, saying, She must be fuck king nuts on page 87. Huh, okay. Well, some believe that Chris McCandless was on a suicide mission. In a letter to Wayne Westerberg, he wrote, It might be a very long time before I return south. This adventure proved fatal, and you don't ever hear from me again. I want you to know that you're a great man. I now walk into the wild. Craig Hurd believes that Chris was just seeking something greater than himself. Do you believe that Chris ever re intended to return from Alaska? Did Chris intend for his journey to end as it did? No, Chris did not intend for his journey to end in such a depressing manner. I mean, come on, one of the last things he writes about is how happiness is only found with other people. Furthermore, when he's on his death sleeping bag, he writes, SOS, I need your help, I am injured. Cracker 12, begging for someone to help him out of his rut. Before that, he had a blast. The Cracker also writes, overjoyed, the proud hunter took a photograph of himself kneeling over his trophy on page 114. Why would someone be so happy and proud, just want to die like that? To think McCandless wanted to die is to think the Earth is flat. Okay, this question asks, why did he carve Nemo? Why did Ruiz and McCandless change their names? Ruiz carved Nemo into the stone because he wanted to separate himself from the idea of society. He wanted to become the nobody that he had written on the stone. For one, the author tells us that the book Ruiz has read multiple times contains a character named Nemo, known for when he flees civilization and severs his every tie upon the earth. Nemo is also Latin for nobody. This is interesting because Latin is a dead language, a language not used in speech or writing by the average person. His split from society can be personified in his choice by not only a nobody, but nobody to no one. 